since I started to use custom nodes in PCG, one of the banes of my process has been why exactly when I update a PCG graph, it doesn't automatically update in the environment. As you can see here, I am updating it. I'm changing the variables. It does get propagated in that detail panel, as you can see, but for some reason, it doesn't live update. And I have kind of figured out why, as well as kind of the workaround, or rather probably the more proper way of doing it, but and it involves using the different loops, which I will be going over in this video. So let me show you what the problem is, why it is the problem it is, and show you how to transition from using just everything in the execution script into implementing into the different kinds of loops that we have, specifically the variable loops and the point loops that I'll be showing you guys today. So here is the building that we've been working on in the series. And I'm gonna show you guys kind of the, the problems that we face with these custom nodes. So if I open up my BCG graph, you can see we are using custom nodes here, custom nodes here, right? And this is all great. But one thing I noticed is if I, let's say sample this multi-floor, we're getting a lot of extra points above, which is really odd, right? But then when I update it, it's all correct again. And again, if I change a value here, if I change it, it goes back to being above until I recalculate it. Now I had a few ideas of what it could be, but the thing that I realized is when I stop sampling the multi-floor and I start sampling the merge, the node before this, before the custom node, is getting the information from this node and it's applying it to the previous node. I'm not sampling the multi-floor, I'm sampling the merge. But yet, when I change this value and I play around with it, it then breaks. And it's it's like applying the custom in information onto the previous uh, node. Now, this doesn't really happen if you plug in the spline sampler itself, but assuming you're having anything other than the sampler, any kind of node here, it will apply it. And to show you that it's not some weird stuff going on this merge, if I unhook the merge, and then of course fix this, you could see here's the merge. This is what the merge is supposed to be. And if I do 10, five, it doesn't matter what I do here, it is still the original merge nodes because I'm not actually copying them over. But as soon as I hook it up and I change this value, as you could see if when I just Recalculate it, it shows the original, but if I change this to 10, it's correct in the first one, even though the numbers are wrong, right? It's not 10 floors right now, but once I change it to something else, you could see it is higher. And if I change the value again, you could see it goes higher. And basically what it's doing is it's applying this onto the merge and then applying itself on top of all the per points that it has now applied again. So it's stacking all the information and you're getting this real weird stuff. And if I keep going, you could see now it's copying the points. And what I can do to really uh, demonstrate this is if I unhook this and I change this to be two floors and I recompile this, if I go in here and I say, start debugging this graph and I press A to get the point information, you can see the number of points is 28, right? So we're seeing that there's 28 points down here. If I move this, there's 28 points at all times. So if I hook this up, there's 28 points in here. So on one floor, it is correct. But one thing you might be noticing, this is getting cleared out every time. So if I set this to three floors, I have to re-click on the building. And now you can see there's 28 points. I've set it, if I set it to be three floors and I reselect the building again, 252. Well, that's odd because that shouldn't be possible. If I select this, it's also 252. So if I change this and I increase the floors to let's say five now, and again, I reselect this building, you can see this merge node now has 6,300 points because it has applied this multi-floor node onto itself multiple times. And then again, apply the multi-floor points. It is duplicating points on top of itself constantly. So this is why it is breaking and is not properly updating. So let's go through these nodes, show you guys how it is that we can use these points to contain within the loops of the PCG graph. And that in itself allows us to have live updates and not have to have this, this problem persist. Now as to why this is happening, I have no clue. It doesn't make any sense why it is happening on nodes prior to 
your custom node on the graph, but BCG is experimental. It is still not fully released. So I'm sure these are just bugs that will be ironed out in the future. For now, let's show you how to actually get these guys converted. So we're gonna get started on this multi-floor. So if I just double click on it, I can open up our multi-floor graph. And basically what we need to do is convert all of this here into the loops that Unreal likes to use. So let's come in here and let's change up some stuff. Starting with the fact that we're not gonna be using this PCG points anymore. So I can actually delete this. We're gonna be using it all from get data and I can take all of this and kind of scooch it aside. We'll grab some stuff from here in the future, but in the end, this is all getting replaced. And if you right click and search loop, you get different kinds of flow control loops. So we have iteration loops, nested loops, point loops, and variable loops. In our case, we're gonna be using a variable loop. As you can see in the description, basically what this allows us to do is take in a single point and output as many points as we want. And that's gonna kind of the key because we are duplicating the points up, 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 up. So that is what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna go ahead and select a variable loop and then I'm gonna to plug in our PCG point data right into the data because we can just drag it in right from here. And I'm going to right click and get in context and plug that into our in context. And then right away from here, I'm gonna right click our out data, promote to a local variable and then just call it out data. That is our final data. And before we go into this loop, I'm gonna change up this information. We're not gonna be using out tag data here. We're gonna get our out data and then we're gonna use it to make PCG tagged data. So it's basically what we had before down here, but we're doing a slightly different way. So I'm gonna take these two, and I'm just gonna plug them back in as we had before. From here, I'm just gonna make an array. So effectively, we've now made a tagged data array, and now we can use the make PCG data collection and plug this in here. So effectively, we have the same result with just a few extra nodes in between, but now we're taking the data and converting it to a collection. Great. So to get this variable loop in here, if you do not see it and you won't by default, you need to override the different kinds of loops. So in this case, we're gonna override the variable loop body and it should pop right up and you can see it here under flow control, variable loop body. Now, the unfortunate thing is you're not able to use these loops multiple times. And that was the original reason I decided not to use this method of creating the custom nodes. Because as you've seen from my graphs, I like to use multiple loops. I like to use many loops, go through all the points, control the index, control this and that. And unfortunately, because we're not able to use multiple point loops or multiple variable loops, but even then we should be able to get pretty much everything we need using these nodes. It's just gonna be a little bit of a minor change to the process. So with it open, let's go ahead and move this return node kind of to the side. In fact, I'm just gonna move it just above here We'll use it at a later point. Effectively, we have our endpoints and they're gonna come in one at a time. So I'm going to right click on this point and I'm gonna just store it as a local variable and I'm gonna call it stored point. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this stored point is different than this point. If I later on in here, if I take this point and I do a set members and I take this point and I do set members, these are gonna be different. Even though the point has been stored, if I have made changes here to this endpoint and then, then I use it down the line, the information is now different. So effectively, I'm storing this as 1.0 our in information. And then if I change these points down the line, it remembers it and it maintains the information for the endpoint. So we have basically made a backup copy of it. If I go back to our main loop body, you can see we basically are checking if the number of floors is greater than one, then we're doing a bunch of calculations to figure out what density is gonna be set and then setting up the different floors and then combining it all together and then setting it all. We're gonna be doing things a little bit different now, but the result is gonna be the same. So first we're going to check if we have a unique first floor. So we're gonna grab is our unique first floor and based on whether or not it's gonna be unique, we're gonna be changing the first floor because right now the points are coming in, they're coming in as 1.0 most likely. So we're going to change the values on these. Now in our graph here, if it is the first floor, we're setting them to 0 0.05. So let's do the same thing here. We're gonna take our points and we're gonna set members in PCG point and we're gonna be setting the density and we're gonna set the density to 0.05 the same way as we had before, if it is true. And then we need to store these points. 
because in here you can see it is taking a array of points. I'm gonna right click on return values, promote this to a local variable, and I'm just gonna call this stored points. So these are all the points that we have stored and I'm gonna take our stored points and I'm gonna add this point to our stored points. So if it is a unique first floor, it is going to just set them to density 0.5 and then store them in our array. But if it is not a unique first floor, then go ahead and actually just add them still. We still wanna add these points, but instead of adding them from the modified, we're just gonna add them from the end point. So I'm gonna just get in point and then I'm gonna plug this in. So now if it is a unique first floor, it is going to set the density in all these points to 0.05. And if not, then it is going to actually keep them as default. Now, again, the reason we did the stored point is now, if I was to use endpoints, so if I grabbed another endpoint here and using the same point, let's say I transformed these, this information, this 0.05 has propagated. It is now stored in this point information in memory. So effectively, I have to assume that it is going to be 0.05 from here on out. And that is why we have the stored point because the store point has the original 1.0 information. It is clean, it is default. So I can use this instead of the information from here to get certain stuff. And then from here, we can actually do a for loop. So I'm going to grab our floors and I'm going to subtract one from our floors because by default, we'll always have one floor in our building. And I'm from here, I'm going to do a for loop. I'm gonna plug both of these add nodes into our for loop. And instead of a first index, we're gonna plug this into our last index and our first index will be one. So effectively, the reason we're doing a floors minus one is because if the amount of floors is one, it is going to exit out of here by default. If the amount of floors is two, it is going to do it once and it is going to copy the floor up one. So from here, I'm gonna grab our return node and we're gonna move it over here under completed. And from completed, it is just going to return all the points it has stored. We can actually already test this. So if I go ahead and compile this, you can see here, we have our original first floor. If I set the floors to one, you can see the first floor is actually already propagating all correctly. And if I don't do unique first floor, if I uncheck this, you can see it automatically updates to the original floor design and I can recheck the unique first floor and it gets propagated to the unique first floor. It now works and I set it to one, you can see it is doing the first floor. And again, I can uncheck this and check this and it propagates right away dynamically, which is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and open our graph here and I'm just gonna unhook some stuff. So let's unhook this multi-floor over here. Let's unhook these two adjacent points and let's uh, unhook this generate room walls for the time being. So that way we're just working with our original multi-floor design. And actually we can actually keep this one plugged in, this multi-floor because it is the same node as we have here. So by having it still plugged in, we can see that it is doing the floor and it is doing the rest. Now really quick, I'm gonna just show you guys. In our last section, we actually put these balconies in, but they're also being placed on the inside. If we just come down here, instead of having them transform points and the spawning of the meshes all the way here, we're just going to take this, I'm gonna scooch it down below and I'm gonna plug it into this density filter instead. And effectively all we're doing is bypassing the inner copy of it. So now if we look here, it is now doing it only on the outside. Great, so from here, we can go ahead and start this loop. Let's grab ourselves a local index variable so that we just have a copy of index so we don't drag it around. And now we can get our stored point because again, our stored point has a density of one so we can use that as our information. So grab a stored point, let's go ahead and break it. And we're also gonna split this transform and we can now copy it upwards as much as we need. But we're not gonna be moving this point. We need to move the original point. So we're gonna grab this endpoint. I'm gonna drag it out. I'm gonna do set members in PCG point. I'm gonna plug this all the way in here. And in here, we're going to expose our transform and we're gonna expose our density because we're gonna be moving them up and we're gonna be changing the density as we go. And at the end, of course, we need to add them to the stored point. So I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna duplicate it over and at the end, this point is added to our loop when it is done. For this, let's split our transform. And just as we had in our execute graph here, we're going to be modifying the density and we're gonna be moving the information up based on the location. So the way we're gonna do that while being the same result is slightly different. So if I scooch this over, we're gonna take our rotation, plug it into the rotation. Scale is going to go in scale. For our density, this is where things change a little bit. So we're going to do a select float and we're gonna basically take this information here where we take our 
number of floors completed, the unique floor offset, all of this that we've done before, we're taking it. I'm gonna take all of this, including the select points node. And actually I can go ahead and copy this as well because we're gonna need it. Take all this, copy it, place it down here. And instead of floors completed, the number of floors completed is actually now our index because when it is completed one, the index goes up. So we can instead of floors completed, we can get index and plug that instead. So that information is automatically achieved for us through this for loop. Now from here, we'll go ahead and just scooch this over, take our density and plug it into here. And then from here, we need to subtract 0 0.01. And that is going to be our new density. Now, why are we doing this? Because over here, as you can see, we are calculating the information, whether or not it is going to be every other, our unique floor. And you can see here, we're removing the density 0.01 from each one. So now this is just simplified all in a single go, which is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and move the points up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select an add node and I'm gonna plug this into the bottom one. And then I'm going to split the top transform. This is just for convenience. It doesn't matter which one you use. So this is going to go into our transform location. And now we can take our index and we can multiply it by our floor height. Depending on the floor it's doing, it will move it up. So I can take this and plug this into Z and now it will move the point upwards. We can go back to our building here and I can go ahead and start changing the amount of floor. So let's do two, three, four, and you can see it is automatically propagating all that information. So if I do 10 floors, it automatically updates the amount of floors. Now we can also do a unique first floor. Check that on, automatically we get that. You can check on unique floor breakup or not. So if I have unique floor breakup on, you can see we get this unique floor design every third floor. I can change that to every second floor, third, fourth. And because it is now using the index, if I set this to a value, that would allow the top floor to be actually the unique floor, it automatically does it for us. So that's awesome. So we now have this full control. It is now doing all of the floors. We can come here, it is fully dynamic. And just like that, we have converted the entire graph from before into this. So all that's left to do is to go our back to our execute graph. And we have now converted all of this we can delete it into our variable loop into just this section. So that seems a lot better and it is completely dynamic. If you guys are enjoying this tutorial so far, I would really appreciate if you guys hit the like button. And while you're down there, if you're new, consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials like this. Let's get back to it. The multi-floor section is done. Now let's go ahead and start working on our next one, which is going to be our two adjacent points node. So we can open it up. In this case, we're actually gonna use two different functions for this. We're going to have one function that selects the two points and gives them the values. And then we're gonna make a second function that just duplicates points upwards, depending on the criteria that we have set. Now, the reason I want to split it is so that way down the line, if we ever need to just duplicate points upwards, we could just reuse that function everywhere. So the multi-floor one is unique because we have a lot of stuff going on. It is also removing point one, so we can select a specific floor, but this new duplicate function will be just a simple copy the floors up depending on how many floors we have. Let's go ahead and set up the, just the selection of the two points first. So this time around, I'm gonna unhook this PCG points and I'm gonna take all of this, everything that comes after it, and we're gonna just scooch it over. And this time around, we're actually gonna be using these PCG points to select our points. So what I'm gonna do is to select our random points, I'm gonna take our PCG points and I'm gonna shuffle them. So effectively we have made a copy of all the points that we are getting them, and then we have reordered them by into a random array. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and just grab ourselves a variable loop as we have done before. I'm going to get in context, plug that in and get our PCG point data and plug that in as well. And from here, just as before, I'm gonna right click, promote a local variable, out data. And to make my life easier, I'm going to grow into our multi-floor that we just created. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right in here and then plug this into our output. So now we have the same kind of setup as before. And now we can go ahead and overwrite the variable loop body. So looking back at our original graph, what we were doing is whether or not there were points to begin with, we were setting them all to be zero first in both scenarios. And then if there were multiple floors, then we were finding one, making sure it is adjacent. And then if it was adjacent, we're setting the value and going from there. But the main thing is they were always being set to density zero. When I go into a variable loop, I'm gonna detach this return node and move it over. Now, this could have been done in a point loop. And the reason I'm not using a point loop is because we're actually using a point loop for this as well. And this is what I was saying about if we had the ability to have multiple of these loops, it would be substantially easier to do the kind of stuff that I wanna do. 
but hopefully that will be coming in the future. All we need to do is take our in point and set members and PCG point. And we're going to be doing is setting the density to zero by default. And now we're going to see if the amount of floors is actually greater than one, because if it is the amount of points is greater than one, then we're going to need to actually find the point that it's next to. But if it's not, then you're pretty much getting out of here. So as before, I'm going to right click on the return node, promote to local variable, and I'm going to call this stored points. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add the points that we have created from this struct in here. And this is going to go into the false. And then we're going to return this. So if the number of floors is not greater than one, then just make all the points black, make them zero density, and then we are good to go. But if it is more than one floor, then let's do some stuff. So first, let's go ahead and grab our point and let's break it to get our information of this point. And the reason we did our shuffle on the PCG points is that way I can grab our PCG points, I can grab a get node, and then I can break that point as well. And now we can see if this point and that point are equal, because if their transforms are equal, then we have the same point. We could also compare other things as well, but in our case, we know as long as the transforms are equal, then it is that point. So assuming that it is that point, we can go ahead and change the values. But if it is not that point, we can do the same thing as before. We can take and add the current points that have failed out of here, and we can plug this in here. Now, note that I am plugging in the in point instead of from the struct. And this is what I was mentioning before. Because we have changed the in point here, if I grab the in point from here, or if I do a get endpoint, it is maintaining that information already. So I do not need to grab from the struct. Now from here, assuming that it has selected a point, I'll go ahead and do another set members node. And the point that it is going to be setting is again the endpoint. And that same point, we're gonna be setting to a density of 0.5. And if we go back to our execute, we were doing this before. We were setting the first point to one, the adjacent point to 0.09, and then we're going through the loops and adjusting the points accordingly. But effectively, I want to know just the two points next to each other. So at a 0.09, I'll be setting it to 0.5. And then as before, we're going to store this point. And then we're going to store it into a new variable. I'm going to make a variable called PCG points selected. It is going to be of type PCG points. Now, what I wanted to originally do is set this here as like, so, but if I was to do this and I hit compile, you can see you get an error. Variable PC point selector is read only within this context cannot be set to a new value. I'll be honest, I have no idea why it is not able to be set. Also, we have a warning here. And this is just complaining that we're grabbing it from here to fix that. Just grab it all the way from back here. But for some reason, you're not able to store the point as a global variable. You can only store it as a local variable. So the workaround for this is if I delete this, I can just right click on the PCG point selected here and convert it to an array. And I can add that point to an array. And now we get the same information as before, but it is now stored. And from here, again, we're going to go ahead and return our stored point. Now, the thing that confused me originally when I first started doing this is we're doing this every single time, right? It runs on every single point, but yet it is adding them and then returning them on every run. So you'd think the points would duplicate each time, but the way it is, I guess, programmed is it is not exporting any duplicate points when it goes through this. It is only doing that one point every single time. So you don't need to worry about the points stacking from what I can tell. But now we have our single point selected. The values are set to zero and 0.5. So that is great. So now let's go back to our execute with context. And instead of going to this out data, we're going to do a point loop from here. So I'm going to drag out and search for point loop. Our data, we can just plug in directly from our variable loop and our in context will grab again. And this part is going to go into our out data. So now we can go using our new point. We can go through a point loop by overriding point loop body. So this is where we're going to find if the point is adjacent or not. So once we've gone through all the points, we want to go through all the points again. And now what I can do is unhook this. And what I want to do is grab this find adjacent point and plug this in here, because basically we want to confirm it. The problem with that is if I was to do this and I set this up with a branch and let's just say out the point and return value to be true, you could see we get an error. Find adjacent point can modify state and cannot be called on self because it is read only target in this context. I am not sure, but for some reason we are not able to use functions in here. But the interesting thing is it's nothing that inside of it is that's the problem. We can take all of this information, we can copy it and we just place it right in here. And the result is the same. Grab our endpoint, plug this in here, plug this into our condition and nothing has changed, but yet this is okay. We need to make a slight modification here. Instead of getting a random selected point, we now have our PCG selected 
selected points. So I'm just gonna grab it and I'm going to get zero. Basically, we only have one point that we have stored in here. So we can just go ahead and just grab it and compare it against the other information here. So whether or not it's to the right, to the left, positive or negative, we can go ahead and compare that. And assuming that it is true, then we can continue on. And if it is false, we can actually return this. So actually I'm gonna plug this in here, move it down. So if it is false, just return the point as you were before. But if it is true, what we need to do is grab our endpoint and we're gonna do a set members, plug this into our true. And we're going to be setting the density on it and we're going to be setting the transforms on it. So I'll go ahead and split the transforms. Now the density is gonna be just hard coded to one and our transforms, what we need to do is just grab from our endpoint and I just make a reroute note so I can go ahead and break it here and split our transforms from here. The location is gonna stay, the scale is going to stay, but our rotation is going to be controlled based on this information. As before, we were doing a calculation to see which axis this is actually going to be in right and then we're going and setting this up here so i'm going to take all of this i'm going to copy it and i'm going to bring this over here so this positive x positive y negative x i'm going to retain i'm going to go ahead and remove the last one which is negative y because as you remember from our before we were never using negative y because that is the basically the last thing. If it is none of these, then it is negative Y. And so we really don't need to set negative Y. So I'm gonna plug this right in here in between these guys. And I'm gonna right click on all of these and create local variables out of all of them. And that will make these all accurate. And then we can go ahead and split the transform rotation from here. I'm gonna take this output and plug it into our Z rotation. So that way it'll go ahead and rotate around itself. And then from here, we are going to go ahead and add this point to our PCG selected points and then we are going to return it. And make sure return value is checked on, otherwise you, this uh, this point will be deleted effectively. Now, why are we adding it to our pre-CG point selected? Well, that's because we're gonna be using this information to see if we need to continue doing this. So if I take all of this, and I'm just gonna scooch this all to the side, what we need to do is check if it's any of these, and we also need to check if the amount of points we've grabbed is enough. So we're gonna take our PCG point selected, and we're gonna check its length. And if the length is actually equal to one, then we're good. If it is not, then go ahead and go false and just execute out of it. And the reason we're doing if it's equal to one is because as you recall, in our variable loop body, we have added something to here. Our original point was added to this point. So it is already at one. So the first time it has, it finds a point that matches within these conditions, it goes ahead and sets its density to one and it rotates that point around. And that is going to be our spawn point. But the next time this is now length is two. So even if it finds a point, it, it falls out of there and just returns the point. So now if we compile this, and I go back to our PCG graph and is uh, complaining that we have no uh, input. I can take this and plug this in here. And now if I go ahead and recalculate this, you can see down here, we have our stairs. Now we haven't duplicated this up, but we have our stairs all the way down below. Now we do need to change the transforms on this guy to adjust to the new position because instead of finding this point and then moving it over, we're doing this point and moving it over. So effectively, if I was to come here, because we have reversed our points, I need to go into our transform points. Instead of negative 155, it is going to be positive. And you can see now it is correct. Now it is removing the points down here and we're gonna be fixing that and we're gonna be copying it over all the way upwards. But our two points note is basically done. We can take all of this down here and you can see this entire thing was now condensed into two loop bodies, the variable loop here and our point loop. So significantly cleaner, but of course we are missing the ability to copy the points up. Now, if you guys are struggling to follow along, there is a link to the Discord in the description where you can hop in and ask any questions you'd like and join the community. Or if you would like access to these files and want to help support me, like these lovely people here, you can join the Patreon where I do post the original project files for all of this you can grab there as well. So thanks again to these lovely patrons and let's get back to it. So for the actual copying points version, we have a sum of that already in our multi-floor. So we're gonna take our multi-floor and I'm just gonna duplicate it. And instead of multi-floor, I'm just going to say duplicate points up. And that is the node we're gonna be using. I'm gonna go ahead and open it and open our graph and I'm gonna change the node title overwrite to instead of multi-floor, I'm gonna call it duplicate points up. And this version, we're gonna not only wanna duplicate it up, we wanna have the ability to have a unique top floor and a unique bottom floor. Now, the reason we want those is because in our staircase, we have, a, we have the floors 
cut out. But we want to be able to filter that out as needed. And we want to also, again, have that top floor not go all the way to the roof if we don't want to. So we want to have a unique bottom floor and unique top floor as options. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and I'm actually going to delete unused points right now. So I'm going to make a new Boolean as well. I'm going to call it unique top floor and I'm going to make that exposed. And we already have a unique first floor. So this is going to take care of both of those scenarios. Now let's go ahead and open up a variable loop body and we're going to be changing up some stuff here. Starting with the fact that we don't need this unique first floor. We can go ahead and remove all this. We can remove this plug this all the way into our for loop. And in this case, instead of the first index being one, we're gonna set the first index being zero. And that is because when we're duplicating the points up, we want to make sure that the original point is remained. And by having it at zero, zero times this floor height will put it back onto the ground. So that's why the first index will be zero instead of one, because we're not, we're not taking the point and keeping it. We're just going to go ahead and remove it and then basically recreate it starting at the ground level. You could of course set first index to be one, but then you have to store it and then reuse it. Just different methods for the same result. Now in this scenario, we're not going to be setting this unique floors. We're not gonna be setting it offset. So we can go ahead and remove all of this. We are transforming the points upwards. So all of this remains, all of this is good. The only thing we have left is to change the density that it is set for the first floor and for the last floor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if the index is actually equal to this floors minus one. So if it is the last index, then we can do something. And we're gonna check if the index is zero, if it is the first index. So if it is the last index, and we're gonna check it if we have our Boolean turned on, if we have the unique top floor turned on as true, and our density is greater than zero, then we will execute. The reason we have this greater than zero density is we only wanna do this on points that actually have information on them. We don't wanna change this on anything that doesn't have information. So from here, I'm gonna grab our density. I'm gonna do a select float node and I'm gonna plug in this add node right in here, right into our pick A. And our regular density is going to go into B and our A will go to 0.5. And then I'm gonna grab ourselves a second float. And instead of going into the density, I'm actually going to take this one, plug it into B and our A will be the density minus 0.2. So whatever it is, I was just gonna lower it a little bit to give that variation between the points, and that is going to go into our density. Now for pick A, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take our points, we're gonna check if it is the first index, we're gonna check if this density is greater than zero, and we're going to check if this is the unique first floor. And just to have consistency, this is called top floor. So instead of first floor, I'm gonna call this bottom floor, and this will go into pick A. So now I can go under edit, delete unused variables, I can go ahead and delete all of these. They're no longer needed. All of these are now exposed. So now that is great. So I'm gonna compile and save this. And if I go back to our graph right here under custom, I can grab our duplicate points up and just drag this in. Holding control, I can retach this into the out, plug this into the in. And now we need to put in the amount of floors. So I'll just grab our floors from here, plug that in. And in our case, for our staircase, we do want a unique bottom floor and a unique top floor. So I'll go ahead and set those up, plug this in. So now if we recalculate this, you could see we now have a staircase going all the way to the bottom and our bottom floor isn't being cut out anymore and it does not go all the way up to the roof. Now, if I was to go back and on those duplicate points up, uncheck the bottom and top floor, you could see it now adds the staircase all the way up because we're filtering it out. On the bottom, it is cutting out the, that section, which is why we have our unique bottom floor that removes just enough and remove the top floor because we don't want it going all the way to the ceiling. So now we're able to control all of these guys dynamically, as you can see. And we can do different kind of floor breakups. We can do unique first floor or not. All of this is being adjusted automatically and dynamically as it should be without needing to move this point around. Now, the only thing that's left to do is to change up this generate room walls node. Now, this one is a little bit more complicated because we're doing quite a bit here. I, mean, I need to still figure out the best way to do this one. We might break this up into a few functions, one that gets a random node, function, one that goes through a loop, etc. We'll see how we tackle this one next time. Other than that, hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.